Tamge Tukji, Shakje Jason, Chong, Yenjim, Duji Punjumba, Serge, Lumbo Tabur, Jibiku, Shakje Jerbe, Shabla, Chancellor. As per request, today I will be elaborating on the subject how to prepare for death. Actually, first of all, one must have a clear understanding of what is death. Otherwise, uh, uh, in a most uh, common sense, people are afraid of death. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. So one has to overcome that. Death is not some kind of uh, curse. Death is a natural cycle. We are born, therefore we die. We died, therefore we will be born. So that cycle has to be understood. After that understanding, then one will not be neurotic about death. Of course, one should understand it in a wholesome, complete manner so that you like to live. You can do a lot in this life. And if the inevitable happens, then you don't take it in a negative manner. Take it as a natural phenomena. So, in order to go into this, then uh, one have to uh, define what is death and what is life. A life and death is uh, very easily defined like this. Long as our mind remains in our body, we are alive. Soon as our mind leaves our body and our body becomes without our mind, absence of our mind, then we are dead. Now what does this say? This body died, but the mind does not die. We make almost a, a magical sort of uh, uh, perception. We have them about immortality. Of course, this mortal body to become immortal is, uh, of course, magical, but not really necessary. But what we call and perceive as ourself 
in positive way or negative way, it never dies. I never die, you never die, nobody die. Far as their essence, their mind is concerned, but their body will die. So this is a, a very basic uh, education. Now, what makes us manifest where we are? physically, mentally, and also in our expression, such as uh, physical gesture and uh, oral expression, and also things that we create, things that we make. So in this, we have to understand uh, we are made out of what? Our body is made out of five elements. Earth, water, fire, air, and space. So, this five element, how does it come together? and become this body of ours. Actually, our body came to be where we are because interdependent manifestation of individual and common past action, which resonates its intention of the common and individual through the manifestation of common elements. So when I say common element, what I mean? Entire existence, highest, the God, the lowest, the hell, in between with the humans and animals. So everything that is common to all of us, as you know, in the teaching of Buddha, six realm. So six realm dwells and manifests and lives. It is the five element through which it manifests, in which it manifests, in which it lives. Now, it is an elaborate, enormous subject. But when you ask me to talk about how to prepare for death, then I have to attempt to communicate to you uh, our body is five sense. I, ear, nose, tongue, and the entire body. And now this uh, uh, sense manifests and uh, uh, interacts and communicates with sense objects which are form, sound, smell, taste,
touch. So this way it is the body that communicates and interacts with the outer existence. Now, what is special here is the sixth sense, which is the mind. Remember, I say five sense, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and the mind, the sixth. So mind sense. Mind sense, it perceives. If you ask what is perceived, all the Dharma, everything that there is to perceive, the mind sense perceives. And which aspect of mind perceives it? We have to say that. Because there is limited dualistic aspect of mind, and the essence of which is limitless, primordial, non-dualistic aspect of mind. So, who perceives it is this dualistic aspect of mind. And how do they perceive? They perceive through five sense. The mind sense, mind, through eye see, through ear hear, through nose smell, through tongue taste, through body the touch, the sensation. So that is what is the definition of living body. But then the essence of the mind, of course, but even essence of five sense, it continues after that. The same way as during life. Only difference is way it interacts with outside of the senses and sense uh, base. Sense is like eye consciousness, eye sense, and then the physical eye. And there's so much uh, uh, detail in it, but I think uh, uh, you will learn it from many other sources. Ear as well, body as well, everything else is uh, intricately explained in the teaching of Buddha. So, how does it continue is right now my eye cannot see through the wall. Simple as that. My ear cannot hear something too loud or something too, too subtle, cannot hear so on and so forth. So, when we are uh, separated from this physical body, our mind is separated from this physical body, which we call death, after that, 
that limit that limitation is not there so walk through the wall we will say that see through the wall we will say this and loudest sound as well as the uh, uh, the lowest sound highest we hear them all it sounds uh, uh, fantastic but uh, of course if you are a good uh, mature enlightened uh, uh, practitioner uh, then it is fantastic but uh, for most of us it is scary absolutely scary that is why we are afraid of death we died countless times we are born countless times although we don't remember all the details but in our subconscious level we remember therefore we are afraid of dying because of that even the toughest person during the moment of death then there is uh, fear and there is uh, apprehensiveness so the mind and body connected is some kind of uh, 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 let's say uh, perceived horizon which we uh, feel comfortable pleasant or unpleasant comfortable something too bright we can close our eye or look or look somewhere else something too loud we put ear plug or walk away so on and so forth but after death that will not be the case one who hears it and the sound which is to be heard are inseparable therefore it is very scary for most of us because we have no control but those who are mature then they will be in control and it is like uh, uh, eagle uh, flying through uh, the powerful wind current uh, eagle needs the current to fly it will not be uh, a matter of of uh, fear but it is actually a joy so many practitioners mature practitioners when they encounter natural death then they remain in samadhi and meditative state for a long time even medically they are uh, proclaimed dead still they remain in a very peaceful beautiful sometimes smiling way i always tell my friends when i die i want to die smiling that's my wish but i don't know whether that happens or not so doesn't matter you smile or not but you should you should be able to die peacefully and uh, without struggle and uh, without fear and just uh, let's go and uh, uh, go into the next life 
if we are truly mature in our practice, then we will reach Buddhahood. Otherwise, we will be able to have a, a great leap of uh, uh, inner evolution during that time. We will see the things in a way that we don't see when we are alive. That limitation is not there. So limitlessness we can experience. And it will not remain just as an experience. It becomes realization and maturity. So uh, that is uh, uh, a basic. Now, uh, now, out of this, then uh, we get uh, basic knowledge, but uh, what should we do right now? Prepare for death. Actually, I think every moment we live, we are living in order to die in a most wholesome and positive and healthy way. When I see some people, they prepare for their funeral years, decades ahead, I see something wonderful. It is sign of their maturity. There is something is right about these individuals. Because most of the people forget about preparing the funeral by yourself, of yourself, but you don't want that subject to be brought up. You get offended. So that shows some kind of maturity, certainly. And now, what you and I can do right now is overcome ignorance. So, now we attempted to overcome the ignorance of what is death by learning few things that I have mentioned. And then, after that, hmm, uh, beyond uh, uh, duality, we have to be able to uh, 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 let's say uh, uh, comprehend because uh, everything that is uh, 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 our mind uh, uh, connects and reacts it is dualistic I, other, me, mine my eye, my ear, the sound that I like, sound that I don't like. So these things are all dualistic. And also, I am hearing something too loud, too low, too noisy, or oh, now good, it is uh, nice, pleasant. Nothing wrong with all of that, but that is uh, uh, something that we have and we use that to understand what is going on. So, everything is interdependent. Everything is dualistic interdependent. Now, basic elements out of which 
our body and our senses are manifesting our earth, water, fire, air, and then, of course, out of the space. So, for example, the uh, natural of all phenomena, uh, uh, everything is uh, 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 perfect in essence. That is space. Now we can correlate this with the uh, five Buddha family, five wisdom, but uh, we have no time for that. You can learn this from uh, many sources of the lineage, of course. Then in that space, everything manifests. So manifest, but the equanimity, because in that space, good things, bad things, useful things, useless things, nonsense things, wise things, all manifest. There it is equanimity. So that's earth element. Now, after that, then, when this manifestation takes place, then it is uh, uh, free of entanglement. So, it is discerning wisdom. Because whatever manifests, they all manifest as how it's supposed to manifest. There's no mix-up, there's no entanglement. This mix-up and entanglement happens all the time, of course. But that's because of lack of our maturity. But otherwise, wonderful rainy day. Wonderful snowy day, wonderful sunny day, wonderful stormy day, wonderful dry day, wonderful wet day. So this way, if one appreciates the potential and uh, equanimity, then one definitely will be able to appreciate all situation as they are. So uh, that is uh, mm, uh, next stage. And that is a fire element. Then it continues. And uh, which is uh, all accomplished. So it is the air element, element of the air or wind. Essence of everything is non-dual. Something wonderful, essence is non-dual. Something terrible, essence is non-dual. Something nonsense, essence is non-dual. There is no dualistic essence, non-dualistic essence. Then, next, everything is reflection, like a mirror. In the uh, space of uh, uh, or emptiness, you can say, or uh, uh, limitlessness. 
So in this all manifest, free of all limitation. Everything is mirror image or mirror manifestation of its ultimate essence. So this is element of water. And so this way we see all the five elements together that makes what lives and what dies. If we live with understanding, we live with positiveness, we live with harmony, then we die in harmony. That's why I always say, told you also earlier, living is preparation for dying, and dying is preparation for living. And we live this life meaningfully so that we can die in harmony, so that our next life will be at least the same quality. But of course, we should aim for better life, next life. We should even aim for absolute liberation in next life. We should never worry about having too much uh, uh, inspiration and aspiration. Nothing wrong with that. You should have maximum inspiration and aspiration. But at the same time, we should be realistic. Uh, our aspiration can be as vast as space. It is only natural because space is part and parcel of us. We are part and parcel of space. And uh, that way, of course, nothing wrong with it. But without uh, being realistic, then uh, uh, we bite more than what we can chew sometime. And uh, 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 we try to lift uh, uh, too much and break our back and forget about lifting anything but our own body we are not able to lift comfortably. It will be agony just to sit or stand. Now this happens because uh, we have been unrealistic. We did not accept the reality. If I am not Hercules, I should not undertake a Hercules task. But I should know and believe clearly, not as a superstition, as a truth and common sense, I have the potential of Hercules. And Hercules have the potential of me, which is not Hercules at all. So that way, uh, even after good understanding of all of this, then we have to really follow uh, principles very important principles. Uh, I like to share with you 
four very important part of uh, many, many teachings, and especially as preparation for uh, death, inevitable. So, four remedies or four force which makes us a truly immortal which we are and not physically immortal but in our essence our spirit our mind our primordial wisdom our primordial potential, we are immortal. So these four things are antidote for overcoming anything that uh, uh, somehow you know, managed to uh, prevent us realizing this potential up to today for many of us and also for many of you, uh, you already have uh, achieved them, attained them. So, but still there is room for improvement. So that is, first of all, we should have the base very, very, very well established, like the base of a pyramid. Comparing to the tip of the pyramid up, the base is huge and the pyramid will not roll around easily, not at all. So for this we should have a clear belief in the truth and truth of our potential. So what is that? Okay. As a Buddhist, we all believe in Buddha. Of course, we believe in Buddha up there. Of course. We don't put Buddha physically in the same level as our physical body. We put up, we bow to Buddha, we make offering to Buddha, we pray to Buddha, everything. We do that. But that is not enough. The purpose of doing that is so that we become the Buddha. That is why we pray to Buddha. Not with the uh, uh, some sort of uh, fixation that uh, Buddha and we will always be separate, Buddha will always be up there, we will always be down there. That is not the purpose. We gradually lift ourselves up by the blessing of the Buddha, by the merit of praying to Buddha and making offering to Buddha, by the wisdom of learning about the teaching of Buddha, and putting them into action so that uh, we do miniature, step-by-step -step activities of the Buddha. Help others, teach others, increase their wisdom, increase their knowledge. Somebody neurotic, at least you try your best to help that person from becoming further neurotic and then at least uh, gradually become somber and wise. So we are doing these uh, offerings and prayers to the Buddha and prostrations to the Buddha because we want to become Buddha. It's not as a competition, but that is the teaching of the Buddha. 
That is the purpose of enlightenment itself. Buddha said so many times, I show you and teach you the path to your liberation. But that liberation is in your hand, up to you. If you put effort, it's in you. So long time back, I wrote uh, uh, something just to remind myself. And then some people made a song out of it. That's all right. You, the Buddha, live in me. Therefore, I am your temple. And when I eat something, I eat it with awareness and mindfulness so that it becomes meaningful for me. Therefore, it becomes meaningful for the Buddha within me as an offering to the Buddha. I'm not putting myself in high places, no. But every single sentient being is Buddha in the making. Because their essence is Buddha. So, so that base is very important. Uh, formal, formally, as a Buddhist, we take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So this way we establish this. Then uh, next is if anything that we have done wrong that we remember or we don't remember in this life or in past life or just uh, yesterday or today. When we know it was wrong, then we acknowledge it to ourselves. If it is necessary, we will talk to others, but not necessary. We don't have to bring bad news to the others, unless it is really necessary and beneficial for others. So for ourselves, we recognize, we accept, I was wrong. I did it wrong. So from today on, I will discipline myself. I will hold myself responsible so that I will not indulge and venture into such act or such even uh, perception, mentally, physically, orally. And uh, so that is uh, very important. And then here, you know, uh, uh, confession. But confession can be misunderstood because uh, if we do something wrong, then it offends the Buddha. Of course, you can think like that because Buddha taught Dharma for all of us to become better and we are not able to and should be disappointing. And also, Buddha took the vow to reach Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings many eons back and so many countless lifetimes of uh, uh, vigorous uh, practice and sacrifice. Then finally he attained Buddhahood. We are not benefiting from it. 
Buddha should be upset. But of course, it is not like that. Buddha's trust is part of enlightenment. Buddha know all of us will never rest until we reach the freedom. Everyone, even in a very, very negative sense, how many prisoners, criminals, who try so many times to break out of their prison. They are wrong because uh, it will not work. At the end, end of the day, it will be not good. But the sense of wanting to be free is there. We'll do ridiculous things. in the name of feeling free. But maybe, and truly in many cases, many of these individuals who tried like that, they are much better taken care inside than outside. But the idea of being not free is uh, 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 what makes person to uh, take such step and measures many times and in catastrophic result. But urge for freedom is always there. And uh, so for this purpose we have confession etc. to make us feel free from that uh, uh, very uh, negative uh, thing, uh, memory uh, in our uh, mind and sensation in our body. And many times it's so severe that uh, people uh, cannot sleep, people develop mental problem, etc., because then cannot uh, overcome this, even uh, physically. Uh, and uh, so uh, it is uh, uh, like a, a biological uh, evolution, which uh, somehow uh, is so good, so that when there is something negative, it wanted to get it out, it wanted to get rid of it. It's like when we have too much uh, something in our uh, blood, uh, then it comes out in a form of a boil uh, and uh, in the most uh, uh, wrong place uh, on our face, on top of our nose, you know, on our cheek and uh, painful and uh, terrible uh, in uh, sight. So it's like that. And uh, so this is a, a scientific and biological that uh, we like to be free. Uh, and now, uh, then next is, uh, we should have uh, uh, dedication. A dedication which uh, uh, will come out in a very nice way. I say, whether you are a teacher of religion, like myself, or student, like yourself, or teacher in the school, or even a CEO of a uh, uh, industry, You should have the sincerity, we should have the sincerity and honesty and clarity and that will make us have the ability. 
So that is extremely important. And uh, uh, now that is uh, uh, to have uh, 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 valid and uh, mature and uh, truthful and genuine uh, uh, common sense uh, principle. Principle of uh, clarity, principle of uh, uh, honesty. Uh, so, so, so this way we can be uh, uh, effective and productive. And what will come out will be nothing less than what will define awesomeness. So, now, uh, uh, last one. Actually, in this life, in a very, very uh, basic uh, worldly sense, we should do our best to uh, think clearly in everything that we involve. How to relate to that? I make it very simple, but it can be very, very uh, complex and enormous of a task. But very simple. You don't leave any un finished business. So we do our best to do everything in a such way that if I cannot get out of my bed tomorrow morning and, and my friends will find a dead body in my bed, then I should not be leaving so many unfinished business, unfinished uh, 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 situations that uh, those who live behind and those who I leave behind, they have to deal with them for years and uh, with uh, all kind of uh, fear all kind of unclarity, all kind of uh, uh, mess, should not. We should be orderly as possible in our life. We should be disciplined as possible in our life. So that after our death, consequences of our carelessness and our uh, lack of mindfulness and awareness should not cause any suffering, any uh, uh, disharmony to anybody. In our life, we do our best directly, not causing them, but after our death, then we should not leave a big mess behind so that everybody have to handle them. And it would be very difficult if we are not clear, if we are not sincere, uh, then uh, uh, those details, uh, they will be uh, kept away from everybody in secrecy, then so many will suffer. And uh, of course, if you are writing books, if you write a hundred book and 50 finished, 50 not finished, that's not so good, but it's okay. It will not give anybody any trouble. But if you have a hundred business and none of them are complete and uh, everything is not clear, 
and uh, it's like uh, take one piece from here and patch on that one, take one piece from there and patch on that one, and like this, just for a stop gap measure, then you are not very good and wise person uh, when it comes to the welfares of those loved ones and dear ones who are left behind. So it should be clear as possible. Of course, in samsara, there is no such thing as a 100% clear cut. There is no such thing. Everything is interconnected as always uh, mentioned. But we do our best. That should be in our conscience. And we should remember the impermanence. Everything is impermanent. Even the sun is impermanent. Planets are impermanent. Everything is impermanent. Our life is impermanent. We should always remember. But then, when this can be, when this is misunderstood, then we might do things uh, um, thinking that uh, a sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, everything will be impermanent, so that we don't have to worry about the environmental issues. You know, uh, not at all, not like that. We have to do our best to take care of environmental issue, because that's what exactly what I'm saying. Now, I will conclude uh, soon, uh, because of time is uh, over. But, uh, uh, you know, environmental issue is exactly that. Uh, we uh, take everything for granted, and uh, we take all the resources, and uh, we create so many things that consumes so much of our res resources, and we almost uh, uh, addicted to them, and definitely we are dependent to so many of them, and that way uh, we will leave a big mess behind for next generations to solve. So, so environmental uh, degradation is a perfect example of uh, this uh, particular uh, aspect. Uh, so we should be mindful and aware about it. everything that we involve. We do our best. And nobody can do more than their best, of course. And uh, uh, Mr. A's best is uh, uh, not necessarily equal to Mr. B's uh, uh, best. Uh, uh, have a good meaning for life. So we will have positive, harmonious, meaningful, natural death. All the best. Buddha bless you. Buddha bless you. And Buddha bless you. First one, to purify all the bad karmas of the past life and the past time. And also, enrich all the good karmas of the past life and the past in this life. And second blessing is presently we should be able to live most meaningful life. And third blessing is so that we will have a meaningful and positive and healthy death. And then we'll have positive next life. Intermediate states are very important, but no time to talk about them here, which is pardo in Tibetan word, intermediate. 
But if this life we lived uh, doing our best, our pardo will be good. And uh, then our next life will be good. There will be no mix-ups. What we did will fall on us. So I end with this. If we throw up a flower, a beautiful flower, the rain of flower will shine and fall on us. Nothing else. Because that's what we threw up and that, that's what will come down. So all the best. May we dedicate the merit of this uh, particular teaching and deliberation for the benefit of all the mother sentient beings, from the highest realm to the lowest realm, throughout the universe, throughout the galaxy, and throughout the space, which is filled with countless universes and galaxies. Chanchu semcho rimbo che maje panam chijuruji jepan nyamba mebariya kone konde pelwar show